Well, good Tuesday morning to you folks. Hopefully things are going well with you and uh, you are up and ready to face the day, whatever that may hold for us. The book of Galatians. Today in chapter 2, I'm going to start reading in about uh, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners. Therefore Christ, the minister of sin, God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, but that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So, righteousness does not come by the law. He's not trying to frustrate the grace of God by trying to work for anything, but he understands that it is grace. It is uh, unmerited favor that is shown unto us. And so Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And I don't know if that's something that we will ever be able to comprehend, that God loved us enough that he sent his only begotten Son, and that Christ loved us enough that he gave himself for us. And so therefore, when we have asked the Lord for forgiveness, when we have repented of our sins, when we have turned from that, when the Spirit of the Lord has drawn us to him and we have answered that call by coming to him. Do you know in the book of Genesis, we find that the Lord God comes walking in the cool of the day and he calls to Adam, Adam, where art thou? If you've ever sat in a church when an invitation has been given, as the old folks, older folks would call it, and still today, altar call. That is a call to come and to repent. Now, some people find that offensive. They say that churches don't need an altar. An altar in the Old Testament was just simply for sacrifice. And that's simply what we do uh, in our churches today that I am associated and affiliated with is we use that uh, altar for a place to come and to repent of our sins. It's just a meeting place with God. Does it have to be there? No, it doesn't have to be there. It can be in your automobile. Uh, it can be um, in your home. It can be out in the woods somewhere, uh, but the altar has to be in here. The Lord draws us, and until he does, you will never be saved. And then when he draws us and we come to him, we repent of our sins. We take him as our sacrifice. We um, confess, we profess uh, that we have received Christ. We follow him, then we repent. It's more than just going to church, paying your tithes and all those things, but we repent of our sins and we follow him. The scripture says he comes and makes his abode in us. We need to be baptized. Yes, let's be baptized. Um, all of those things that we look at in the word of God, those things that we need to be discipled in after we are forgiven of our sins, after we have um, repented and dedicated our life to him, we can talk about those things. But first and foremost, none of this is possible. None of it is possible if he didn't love us first, and he did. And so I used to sing this song years ago with some fellows, um, and I don't have the words anywhere, and uh, it took me a little while to find them online, but I did find them. I've been thinking about this song, so we'll give it a shot today. I tried and tried to think of some good deed that I had done that would give to me a right to claim 
a kinship to God's Son. Could it have been because I tried in every way to please? Could it have been because I've spent some time down on my knees? Could it have been because my heart was often touched with pain? Could it have been because I often witnessed in His name? Or could it be that in the past some precious soul I've won? I search my heart and realize it's nothing I have done. The love of God defies all understanding of the mind. He chose Die for all mankind. Those ugly scars he bore for me while hanging on the tree was the price of my redemption, and he did it all for me. Now I've been a trusted friend to someone on life's road, shared a simple cup of water with a tired and thirsty soul. I try to be to those I meet as gentle as a dove, but I've never done a single deed that's worthy of His love. The love of God defies all understanding of the mind. He chose to walk up Calvary's hill to die for all mankind. Those ugly scars he bore for me while hanging on a tree was the price of my redemption and he did it all for me was the price of my redemption and he did it all for me all Because he loved me and because he loved you. Um, the love of God defies all understanding of the mind. Um, but I'm glad he loves us. Lord, I thank you for the day you've given us. God, I pray that you would encourage, strengthen, help those that hear this today to know and to see and to realize how much you care for them, how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks. See you Wednesday.